Hey guys, Kenneth here and welcome to my movie corner and welcome back to my X-Men review series leading up to Deadpool and Wolverine. Yep, this is it. We are in the second half of this franchise start that started with X-Men First Class. Yes, X-Men First Class. Um, I used to own it on Blu-ray, but I upgraded to 4K. I will give you my thoughts on this 4K once I... One after I talk about my positives and negatives. But yeah. X-Men First Class. This is kind of like a special film for me because... I don't know if you guys know this, but X-Men First Class was the first X-Men movie that I saw in theaters. Um, now, I did say that Origins Wolverine was the first X-Men movie I saw. But First Class was the first that I saw in theaters. Um, I do remember I saw it in... 2011, I think, with my parents, um, we were like, oh, what movie should we watch? And we ended up going to see X-Men First Class. Now, at first, I was not that sure if I was going to like it, because up until that point, the only one I'd seen was X-Men Origins Wolverine, but once I saw it, I was like, wow, that was great. And... Yeah, I rewatched this, like, ever since I rewatched this, I think, five times. Um, this was actually, I actually just finished rewatching it for the fifth time in theaters. And, yeah, X-Men First Class is one of those films that, is one of those that I do consider one of the best installments in the franchise. In fact, might be a bit of a controversial opinion, but I do consider X-Men First Class to be better than... The first two X-Men, I know- They GET THE FUCK OUT OF HERE! So, it might be a controversial opinion, but you know what? It's my opinion. Um, it's one of my favorite in this franchise, and I would say this latter half of the franchise contains some of my favorite in this franchise. In fact, it contains my personal favorite in the franchise, which we'll get to later. But yeah. Um... Even though this was marketed as a prequel, I think this was marketed and promoted as a prequel to the X-Men trilogy. It's really not a prequel, which for reasons I will explain to you later. You see, Matthew Vaughn, who was who is remembered for also directed movies like Kick-Ass and Kingsman the Secret Service, and hopefully forgotten for that for that mess that was Argyle. Um he intended for X-Men First Class to be like a clean slate for the franchise. And that is why in the thumbnail I did say this is one of the best Marvel reboots because it is more of like a reboot than a prequel. And yeah, X-Men First Class, man, like, it's, I still stand by this. As a prequel, it's suspicious at best. But as a reboot, this is one of the best reboots to a superhero franchise, like, ever. And, yeah. So, let's get into the positives. I think the first positive, and the thing that really carries this film, is both James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. Um, that's what I like about this film, is that um, Fassbender and McAvoy don't really feel like imitations of both Stewart and McKellen because, yeah, in, in theory, they were never meant to be those same versions given that this was originally meant to be a reboot. Um, but yeah, they do the, the work really well. Um, I, I Let's start with James McAvoy as Professor Charles Xavier. I would say he does a pretty good job playing a young Xavier, you see him at first being some sort of a ladies' man, you know, as he flirts with this chick played by Annabelle Wallace. I think this was her first movie. And then he starts to flirt with uh, Moira, who was played by Rose Byrne. So at first he's sort of like a playboy ladies' man. But then as the movie progresses, he becomes more, he becomes that mentor figure to the first class of X-Men. And I think he does that job well, becoming that me that mentor of the X-Men, being that wise mentor. While you could tell a bit he is blinded that he is 
still like similar to his older version, he is blinded by the fact that he does believe that humans and mutants can coincide and coexist. I would say he is a lot more I would say he you understand why he is that way, which I will get to once I talk about the performances. But I think the real show stealer, the real show stealer is Michael Fassbender as Magneto. I will say him becoming from Eric Lencher to the Magneto that we know is kind of beautiful and tragic because I will say this, I think Magneto is the main protagonist of this movie because keep in mind this started out as a Magneto movie. This was supposed to be X-Men Origins Magneto but since X-Men Origins Wolverine kind of flopped they repurposed into X-Men First Class and from the movie you could tell this is more about the origins of Magneto. While it is about the origins of the X-Men, it focuses a lot more on the origins of Magneto and why he is the way he is. And yeah, like I said, it's almost a thing of beauty and tragedy when he becomes that villain that we all know and love. Um, again, Fassbender just gives a very, very convincing performance. Like, it also shows that Magneto can be kind of scary, especially that scene in Argentina where Magneto killed those Nazis, which, let's face it, no big loss, they were Nazis. Let's just say I'm Frankenstein's monster. It shows that, yeah, he can be kind of scary because he pretty much killed those without a breaking a sweat. And sure, Magneto has killed people in the X-Men franchise, but it was more like nothing personal. It was more like a means to an end. But here you're like, yeah, this is personal. And honestly, I would have preferred, I would have loved if this movie was about Magneto hunting former Nazis. That would have been kind of cool. But yeah. And also, when, when I detail that this is what you get to understand why he is the way he is. That also goes to his savior. You understand why both have these same, why both have the ideologies. While they both want mutant prosperity, they both have different methods because of their different upbringings. You see, Xavier was, was more living a life of comfort and we assume he was rich. And given that he was never, he never had to hide he was pretty much living a normal life, while well, Magneto, well, Eric, pretty much lived a living hell given that he was in the Holocaust, which, let's face it, to anyone, that was probably hell on Earth. Um, and given that he was experimented, tortured, and given that hell he was in the Holocaust, you understand why he has his beliefs, and why he, because he understands that, you know, Humans did that with Germans did that with the Jews. What doesn't what what doesn't stop humans from doing that again with mutants? And yeah, you do get an idea of where both sides come from. And there's something tragic about their friendship because they start being as friends, but as the movie ends, they pretty much become enemies. And again, it's so tragic because part of you wants them to remain friends, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, this friendship is kind of doomed. And when, like for example, when Magneto kills Shaw, you understand that there's no going back for him and that Magneto and Xavier are destined to be enemies. And when he and when Xavier gets paralyzed and Magneto says, I want you by my side. And it shows that they never he never wanted to be Xavier to be his enemy. He wanted Xavier to be by his side. But given that both have different ideologies, you understand that they both that pretty much them being side by side was pretty much impossible until X-Men Days of Future Pass, of course. Also, I did like Raven in this movie. This was, alongside The Hunger Games and Silver Linings Playbook, which won, her, which won Jennifer Lawrence an Oscar, this is 
one of those movies that put her on the map. Remember in the early 2000s where, where Jennifer Lawrence was everywhere? I mean, now she is sort of getting a resurgence. But remember, like, for example, the X-Men, the new X-Men movies, um, The Hunger Games. She was also in other movies like Passengers and Red Sparrow. And she was recently in movies like Don't Look Up, which I didn't like. And she was also in No Hard Feelings, which is a very funny movie that you guys should see. And I do like Mystique in this film because you see... Her relationship with Xavier was never, like, detailed in the original trilogy. They never really interacted, as far as I know. But here, it's revealed that they were they both grew up as brother and sister. Which, you know, Xavier never refers to her as her sister in the, in the original trilogy, which I will get to that later. Um, and you can still tell that she kind of wants to blend in, but... As the movie progresses, you you kind of get the mystique that we know, and that she at first she wanted to blend in, she wanted to be normal, but as she becomes more comfortable with her powers, she's more like you know what maybe I like myself the way it is, almost like a coming of age subplot, except it's for a villain instead of a hero. And yeah, also I th I thought Kevin Bacon as the villain Sebastian Shaw, he was. A really good villain. He wasn't like standout, but he was a good villain, um, and he was pretty much the reason why Eric has the beliefs that he has. Because when before Eric kills him, he pretty much tells Shaw, "Shaw, I always agree with you, but you killed my mother." And I know some people will say that, oh, that I know some people will side with Eric with with Charles because he because he was trying to make Magneto the better man, but just ask yourself this question. If you were, if your mother got killed in front of you and you were face to face with the guy who killed your mother, would you let him live? Like, let's face it. That's kind of like a completely justifiable reason. Reason Again, it doesn't justify his killings and, and the other ones, but it's kind of like a justifiable reason. Plus, the people he kills are mostly Nazis, so no big loss. Um... Also, the film is beautifully directed. Matthew Vaughn is a good director, and he is not a creep like, you know, Brian Singer or Brett Radner, which kind of feels off, kind of feels a bit uncomfortable praising those movies, given that it was, they were directed by creeps. Um, but yeah, it is a pretty well-directed movie. You still have some of that Matthew Vaughn-ness in the film. Um, sure, it's not like a comedy like Kick-Ass or X-Men, I mean, Kick-Ass or Kingsman or Argyle, which those are more action comedy. This one is a lot more serious and darker, but there is some subtle humor here and there. Similar to the first one, the humor is subtle, but it's not like, like the MCU where it can feel forced. That's what I like about these movies. They have humor, but they never feel forced. And I also like the fact that this is more about, this has the setting of the Cold War as, you know, the Cold War, there were tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, and that is part of the story. Basically, the mutants trying to prevent World War III because Shaw pretty much wants to pretty much start World War III. And I also like the fact that, for the most part, mutants are pretty much unknown at that time. Because in the original X-Men trilogy, people are starting to realize that mutants exist. Here, mutants are completely unknown. People don't know mutants exist. And some of them think that they're just crackpot crazy. And, yeah. I just like the setting and the concept of mutants being an unknown species at that time. Also, the third act is pretty tense. Like, once you see, once the X-Men start to, once the X-Men suit up, which is actually kind of cool seeing them in a blue and yellow uniform, that's actually kind of cool to see, and once you think they're going to stop Shaw, but once you know that Magneto is alone with Shaw, you know there's no going back for him, and when both start fighting, and when both Charles and Magneto start fighting because Magneto is about to throw missiles at both the Russians and the Americans, 
you know there is no going back and these two and the friendship between these two is kind of doomed it's kind of dead at that point and when xavier gets his his um gets shot in the back you're like oh there's no going back for them and yeah like it's just perfect now as for negatives I don't have that many. I mean, some of them are nitpicks regarding the continuity of the original trilogy. But I would say if you look at it on 4K, you could tell some of the effects and green screen are starting to show their age. Now, they're not as bad as in the first X-Men movie where some of the green screen some of the green screen and CGI is like, "Ish, that didn't age well." But you can tell a lot of the effects are starting to show their age. Now, I guess some people watching this might have that question. Is X-Men First Class a reboot or a prequel? I would say it lies in between. Keep in mind, like I said in the beginning of this video, this was originally meant to be a reboot, like a straight up reboot. It wasn't until Days of Future Past that First Class was repurposed as a prequel to the original trilogy. So there are a lot of things in this film that contradict what the original trilogy said. Like for example here, in this shot of X-Men 1, Xavier says that he met Magneto when he was 17. Now, let me ask you something. Does he look 17 to you? And it's not like he's playing a 17 year old, like he's not meant to be 17 in this film. He is at least like in his mid-20s at best. So, yeah, it sort of contradicts that. It also has, it also, it's, it's said in the first X-Men, I think it was the first X-Men, that Magneto helped Xavier build Cerebro. But in reality, the one who built Cerebro was Hank, aka Beast. So, again, that's another contradiction. And the other one being that in X-Men... 3 and X-Men Origins Wolverine, we see Charles Xavier walking while using his powers, and we see in first which in, in first class supposedly takes place 10 years before X-Men Origins Wolverine and 20 or 30 before X-Men first X-Men the la the opening of X-Men the Last Stand. So you're like, okay. Now they do explain in Days of Future Past that he can walk while taking a medication. But that medication sort of controls his powers, so I'm like, okay, that's a bit contradictory. So, those are some of the big, like, contradictions. I mean, it's full of them. Like, for example, Xavier never regarded, um, never regarded Raven as his sister in the original trilogy, but here, he pretty much treats her like his sister. So, yeah, it kind of can get to the... If you're watching this, binging the film, you're, and you watch this as a prequel, you're like, doesn't this contradict what was said in the original trilogy? But if you look at X-Men or at X-Men First Class as a reboot, it all makes more sense because keep in mind, this was never meant to be a prequel. In fact, a lot of people might not know this, but Vaughn intended to recast Wolverine. In fact, Wolverine in the next one was going to be played by Tom Hardy when Matthew Vaughn was involved. But Fox was pretty much put the kibosh on that and due to creative differences, he ended up leaving Days of Future Past. But yeah, I would say this is one of those movies that you should watch more as a reboot rather than a prequel. Now, let's talk about this 4K. This 4K for the most part is good. I didn't think it was like a huge difference over the first Blu-ray because I did see it on Blu-ray and I did see it on 4K. Um, it's, there are a lot of, there are some details in the face that you would not see on the Blu-ray, but it's not like a huge night and day difference. It's a good 4K and I do like, and I don't regret purchasing it. I'm just saying if you have it on Blu-ray, uh, you're not really missing much. Um, and also, don't expect this Blu-ray, this 4K to be, like, ultra clean, given that this was the last X-Men movie to be shot on film. This has a pretty heavy layer of grain. Sometimes it's not that bad, but sometimes, like, yeah, it's pretty grainy. So, yeah, 
expect a lot of frame when it comes to this 4K, but for the most part, it's a decent 4K. It's not like the best, but it looks decent on 4K. So, here are my final thoughts on X-Men First Class. Like I said, this is one of the best Marvel reboots of all time. Yes, I said reboot because, again, this was originally meant as a reboot. Again, it's probably one of my favorite installments in the film. I mean, in the franchise. And, of course, I am going to give X-Men First Class the first, the franchise's first, 10 out of 10. Yes, I know some people will say, is it biased because you saw it in theaters as a kid? Maybe. But you know what? I think it deserves that 10 out of 10. It's probably, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. You'll see which one it will be my favorite later on, a, a couple of videos forward. But it is, if I would, if I could make a, a ranking, it would pro, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up in the top five. So yeah, 10 out of 10, this is one of my favorite installments in the franchise and what probably my favorite comic book movie of 2011. So yeah, those were my thoughts on X-Men First Class. Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this movie? Did you hate it, this movie? Or, and as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, next Friday, this Friday, I am going to be releasing my review for The Wolverine and on Sunday, I'm going to be releasing my review for X-Men Days of Future Past. Yes, we're full steam ahead of these in these movies. But after, I think, Apocalypse, I am going to review just one per week before Deadpool and Wolverine. So yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If, if you like this, please drop a like and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on my social media. The links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day, and it out.